Look at that amazing leatherback turtle. I encountered that turtle on a beach in a remote part of the Solomon Islands earlier this year. This kind of turtle can grow to 900 kilos in size, and they'll always return back to the same beach to lay their eggs. Throughout the year, turtles like this will swim great distances between many islands in the Pacific. And while they're swimming between those islands, they're vulnerable to getting caught in fishing nets. And as a fishery manager, I've seen firsthand the impacts from illegal fishing, overfishing, and bycatch. Now, that can be devastating. But today, I'm here to talk to you about what happens when nations work together, how we can ensure that there is still plenty of marine life and fish in the sea for generations to come. Now, achieving sustainability is something we aim for in many areas of life. We strive for a balance between what we all value as a society and economic development and the environment that sustains us. Now, with fishing, that concept might seem simple. We don't want to catch too many fish now so that there's still plenty of fish available in the future. But it is very complicated because there are so many different people, perspectives, and different interests. For example, on the one hand, we have large-scale commercial fishing boats like these ones. This boat will travel between many different islands in the Pacific region, and in a single trip, that boat can catch up to 1,000 tons of fish. But that boat is licensed to fish, and it does pay access fees to the Pacific Island states. Then on the other hand, you have small-scale fishers, the traditional fishers who go out with their nets to catch fish to support and feed their families. Balancing all of these considerations is what fisheries management is all about. However you look at it, though, the fisheries in the Pacific are critical for their future. It provides revenue, it provides jobs, and it provides food for the Pacific Island states. All right, so let's take a moment. Who are we talking about in the Pacific Islands? We're talking about islands that are spread across a vast area, from the east coast of Australia, up north towards PNG, Palau, and across to the Cook Islands. Some of these countries are so small that you can't even see their landmass on this map. But what you can see are the areas shaded in brown and in blue, which is their area of waters that surrounds them. It's their exclusive economic zone, which stretches out 200 nautical miles from their islands. And they have the exclusive rights to the fish and the resources in those waters. So it's absolutely critical that the fisheries management is sustainable. Now, the key elements for the achieving sustainability in fisheries management are having effective data and monitoring controls so that you know what's being caught and how much is being caught. It's also critical to have effective management, regional management that applies across those whole areas. And finally, thirdly, for sustainable management, you need to have effective surveillance and monitoring so that you can identify illegal fishing boats and apprehend them. But let's start with the data. So the four key species of tuna that occur in the Pacific Islands are yellowfin tuna, skipjack, albacore, and big eye. Together, the combined catch of these four species reaches a staggering two and a half million metric tons every year. And you can see it's been increasing steadily since over the last 50 years. And in blue, in the center, you can see the component made up by skipjack tuna, the most abundant of those species. Many of you would recognize skipjack. It's what you get in your supermarkets in a tin of tuna. It's an enormous source of protein for the whole world, and you can buy these tins of tunas in just about every country around the world. But with these tuna species, there's many elements to consider. We need to ensure that we get all the fundamental management right so that the Pacific Islands can have the control of their resources and make sure that they protect them and eliminate any illegal fishing. So the Pacific Islands have been taking a strong stand against illegal fishing. 
Illegal fishing is when boats fish without a license, or it can be when they fish and break the rules. So in the top left, you can see a boat that has a license that's being boarded to see if it's following the rules as it's fishing for tuna. And on the bottom left, you can see some of the smaller scale boats which have been illegally fishing for sea cucumbers, beige de mer, and giant clams like the ones you see on the right. These giant clams can live for 100 years, and they were apprehended on a boat that was fishing illegally within Australian waters not so long ago. So as you can see, it's absolutely critical that these boats are apprehended and also that we ensure that they follow the rules. And the key to that is international cooperation. Where I work at the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency, we run a regional surveillance center. And the regional surveillance center includes staff and people from all our member countries in the Pacific region. It includes naval officers, military personnel, and fisheries officers. These are the people that are monitoring and tracking illegal fishing boats in the Pacific. Now, every single boat that fishes in the Pacific for tuna has to have a satellite tracking device on the board. And those satellite trackers transmit their location to our surveillance center. And so that's what we can see on the screen and monitor to make sure they're fishing with the appropriate licenses and that they're not fishing in areas they're not allowed to be. And this is what that looks like when we're watching them on the screen. All of those dots represent a boat that's fishing for tuna in the Pacific Ocean, moving around great distances. For every boat, we have a file that includes licensing details and any intelligence that the countries and people have gathered. That allows them to prioritize the status of the boats, to work out whether they're fishing illegally or not. All the boats marked in red are suspected of illegally fishing or have fished illegally in the past, whereas all the boats in green are considered in good standing. But not all the illegal fishing boats are going to voluntarily show us where they're fishing. <laughs> so the key is also having effective surveillance using patrol boats and airplanes and also satellites even. So the information that's detected from these surveillance aircraft gets transmitted to the operation center where I work in the Solomon Islands. We then handle that information and send that out to the member countries. And then it's up to the national governments to take action, to send out boats to apprehend and prosecute any illegal fishermen. So that's uh, how we're handling the illegal fishing. But there are still many challenges with the boats, several thousand vessels fishing for tuna in the Pacific Ocean that have a license. For those vessels, it's critical that we get the management right between all 37 countries, and we need collaboration between those countries that are fishing for tuna in the Pacific. Now, that kind of collaboration is not easy. It takes a lot of time, and it requires a lot of patience to get the management rules in. But the Pacific Island states, remember, they own the resources in their water, and so they're taking strong action to ensure that effective management measures are in place. And one of the best examples of that is the skipjack tuna fishery. So this fishery includes some of the largest boats, several hundred of them, which fish across the Pacific, and they encircle large schools of skipjack tuna within their nets. So the Pacific Islands management measures, working together, they have capped the amount of fishing effort that can occur in this fishery. Then a share of that total sustainable cap is then allocated to each country. They own that share. They then sell that share that they own onto fishing companies and businesses that are gaining access to their waters. That model ensures that they can't fish more than the sustainable limit for skipjack tuna. So in cases like this, the management is working really well. We are not catching too many skipjack tuna. But there are still many challenges. For example, with big eye tuna, the, in methods like this, they are still catching too many small fish, and that species of tuna is overfished. There are also still challenges with bycatch. So when you encircle a large school of fish in that net, you might also catch other species, and that could be things like turtles or dolphins. But there are rules in place to protect the bycatch and protect the marine wildlife as well. When they set the net, there are rules on how they set to avoid bycatch. There are also rules in place on what happens when they capture 
marine mammals, like dolphins or turtles, to make sure they can be safely released. And they can be if the fishing industry is responsible and releases them. So one of the key elements, though, is to ensure we have confidence in the data so that we know what's happening on board these boats. And to do that, there are over 800 fisheries observers employed in the Pacific region. And they monitor all the catch to check that it's being reported correctly and that we know what's going on in these boats. To also enhance the management and surveillance in, in, on these boats, we're also trialing camera systems that can also verify what's caught and, and check that it's being reported correctly. So the surveillance of these observers includes every trip on a Persane boat and on other methods, not as much, but we're looking to enhance that independent monitoring. So as you can see, the Pacific nations working together are achieving an enormous amount, but they also need your help. As consumers, you have enormous power to shape how industries grow and shape how industries develop. You can make a choice. When you go to the shops or the fish market, you can choose to buy sustainable seafood products. And there are many ways you can find out what is a sustainable seafood product. You can look for eco-labels, something like the Marine Stewardship Council's blue tick of approval. Or you can look up sustainable seafood guides on the internet. There's plenty there. And the other thing you can do is look for local-based seafood in Australia. Australian fisheries are amongst the best managed in the world because we have high standards and we have good procedures in place to verify that the fishing industry is fishing responsibly and in accordance with those standards. But there's something else you can do. You can take a holiday in the Pacific Islands. <laughs> Go exploring. Go to somewhere you haven't been to before, Kiribati, or go to Samoa, Tonga, or up to Micronesia. These countries have amazing marine life. So if you're going there to spend time on the beach or to go snorkeling with some of this marine life, you can experience it, and you can create value for those environmental resources. And you also create value for their conservation efforts. So all of this matters so that we can get the balance right. We are managing this fishery for everyone so that we can have food and opportunities in the Pacific Islands, and critically, so that we can ensure there are still plenty of fish and turtles left in the sea. Thank you.